Welcome back to Backspace Academy. Now, from our introduction to AWS, we should already know that CloudFormation uses text files that we create called templates, and it interprets those to deploy resources across the AWS cloud. So we're going to have a look at what one of these templates looks like, the structure and the sections of them. Then we'll look at the stack sets service, which allows you to use a CloudFormation template to launch across multiple AWS accounts, which is great if you're a large organization. We'll look at the CloudFormer tool, which can look at your existing infrastructure and create a template from that, which can then be used to create a replica of, of that infrastructure. And finally, we'll look at the CloudFormation Designer, which is a graphical user interface to the CloudFormation service. A CloudFormation template allows you to define in a text file exactly what your deployment looks like and the configuration of it. And because it's a text file, you can manage it in the same way that you would manage code. And you would use version control in the same way. So you could use Git, Subversion, or Microsoft SourceSafe to manage the version control of that text file. Now those files are in either JSON or JavaScript object notation or YAML, which stands for yet another markup language. And that template describes all of the AWS resources that you need to deploy. And then CloudFormation will interpret that text file and will take care of the provisioning and configuring of that infrastructure. So this is what a CloudFormation template structure looks like. So with JSON, you can see the individual objects of that template are separated by brackets and commas. Now, YAML is similar to if you've ever coded in CoffeeScript or if you've done development with Pug or anything like that, the brackets and the commas are replaced by indentations. And so what that means is that you get really concise and neat code. And as you can see there, the JSON on the left looks a lot messier than the YAML on the right. So I'd encourage you to use YAML. And in the exam, if you have a question on cloud formation and they supply a template, they normally provide both the JSON and the YAML. So don't be too concerned about which one you select there. The first section of a template will be the format version, and that will be the version of the CloudFormation interpreter that the template conforms to. Next, we'll have a description, and that will always follow the format version. Then we can have metadata, which will be JSON objects or keys that can be put in there in that template to provide additional info. We have parameters, and that allows you to pass information to the CloudFormation service when the stack is being deployed. For example, you might want to get information from the end user when they're deploying this stack of what size of instance, for example, that they would like to deploy with. And we have mappings, and they match keys to corresponding name value pairs. For example, you might want to match a specific AMI to a region. So if your end user selects a certain region as a parameter, then we could map that parameter to a specific AMI for that region. Transforms are used for two purposes. First of all, they can be used for defining the serverless application model to use if you're going to be doing a serverless architecture, or they can be used to include template snippets from CloudFormation to include in your CloudFormation template. We also have the output section and that will declare output values that can be put out to the screen to the person that is deploying the stack, or they could actually be outputs to another CloudFormation template. And the resources section is the only compulsory section of a template. So you must have the resources section. And that simply just declares the resources that you're going to be deploying. And finally, we've got conditions, and we can use those to control when a resource can be created or a property defined. So if under so certain conditions, we don't want that to occur, we can put that in as a condition. CloudFormation stack sets allows you to create stacks across regions and even across multiple accounts. 
So that is great if you're a large enterprise and you've got organizations across the globe and they've all got individual accounts or you might have departments with individual AWS accounts. So that's great for that situation where you would have a one controlling administrator account that would have a stack set and that could be deployed across all of your infrastructure company-wide. Cloudformer is an application that runs on an EC2 instance, and you deploy that application using CloudFormation. So when that application has been deployed, the application that's running on that EC2 instance will look at all of your infrastructure in your account, and it will compile that for you, and then you can select those resources that are deployed and it will put them automatically into a cloud formation template for you. So that's great because you can have an existing infrastructure and you don't want to go to the work of having to create a cloud formation template. The cloud former tool can do it all for you. And finally, we've got the cloud formation designer. Now that's a great tool. And if you're going on to do the associate level course, we'll get to use this quite a bit. And what it does, it's a visual drag and drop interface for creating cloud formation templates. It'll automatically produce that JSON or YAML file for you, which is really good because you're going from an architecture design diagram and, and getting that directly to a template, which is a great workflow to use. So I'd, I'd thoroughly encourage that you get to learn Cloud Formation Designer. It takes a lot of time to get used to, but I think it's worth the effort. So that brings us to the end of the Cloud Formation lecture. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.